Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you. So you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Hello and welcome to another book look. This time we are looking at drawing American manga superheroes by, that's right, your hostess with the mostess, Andy Smith. That's me. This is my second how to draw book that came out from Watson Guptill. This book came out, I believe, in 2000. Well, let's find out, because I honestly don't remember when this book came out. Uh, before we get to that, the title, Drawing American Manga Superheroes. The reason behind this book, at the time of this writing, when I did this book, uh, this type of style in comics was really popular. Guys like Humberto Ramos, uh, Ed McGinnis, Joe Maderera, uh, Mike Rowingo, all kind of have... <clears throat> Uh, this look of uh, of manga influence. The manga is Japanese comic books, manga. Uh, I don't. I I never know if it's manga or manga. Sorry. Um, I've heard people say it both ways, and I've heard adamant people say it's manga, and then somebody else would be like, no, no, it's manga. So you know what? One day maybe I'll get to Japan and I'll find out for sure. So. Uh, Watson Gupto was like, we'd really like you to do, do this book because we think it'd be a, a big hit. So I was like, okay. Um, so this book, I got to play with, and I am a big fan of manga as well. I have a few favorites. I, Ghost in the Shell is one of my favorite books um, by Masamune Shiro. Uh, there's a book called Bastard. That's the title. Uh, Don't Shoot the Messenger, uh, who's... Uh, I really like that book, and unfortunately, the guy's name is escaping me. Um, and, and there are a bunch of others. I really like the clean style of manga. So this book came out in 2007. So seven years after my first one, this book came out. Um, table of Contents. I thought the designer did kind of a nice job giving it this techier type look, I guess you could say to it. It's kind of the same type of breakdown as the first book in regards to uh, the chapters and how I did them. Here's a funny thing. This is what I wanted for the cover originally. This is what I did. I thought this would make a great cover for the book. And instead, they, they mocked this up from a page inside the book. I got to admit, I do like it. And, you know, they're more than welcome as the publisher. They knows, know, they knows, they them knows, they know what sells. So, and then I colored this trying to go more with the, uh, uh, I guess, anime type style as well. So, setting up your workspace. <clears throat> For writing this book, I thought it would be cool to show my workspace, um, my workspace does not look like this anymore. I still have a drafting table, don't get me wrong, that I work at. And you could probably go back my through my YouTube videos. There's one on my studio where I take you through my current studio. Uh, like I said, this book came out in 2007. Uh, we have not lived in the house that is uh, this photograph was from since uh, 2010. So... I still have a drawing table. I still have this tab array sitting right next to it with tools on it. I still have one of these. So it's really a lot the same. The only difference is I now have a computer set up with a Cintiq so I can draw some digital stuff as well. 
but I always like seeing people's studios. Get into the different types of tools. This time I went with using photographs to show different tools I use. Uh, paper and such. Templates, still have these, still have that. Um, I really, really enjoy drawing in this style. Um, just something fun about, because I knew how I was going to color the work, trying to give it an anime cartoon type feel in the color. So, you know, it's, it's all open and black and white. It's like a coloring book. There's no rendering that you usually do in comics. And if you look at a lot of manga, manga, uh, books, they have some hatching, but a lot of it's kind of open. It just depends. Here we talk about drawing the figure, proportion. The heroic manga male is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine heads high. Generally, if you look at my first drawing book, Drawing Dynamic Comics, the figure's only eight heads high for the superhero. But manga, they're more elongated and stretched out, and I think that's so cool. Even drawing the face differently as well. The female, and then the heroic manga teenager. So I want to show what teenage first man in penumbra might look like in their proportions. Uh, and then this is a comparison. So this is basically an eight head high uh, Western comic superhero figure. The way I draw now is what I call pseudo realism. And what I mean by that is it's not photographic realism the way I draw but it's based in reality in terms of proportion and things like that. I mean, I do exaggerate stuff, of course, but this is pseudo-realistic. It's not super cartoony, whereas this is definitely more cartoony. So I want to show the difference in the poses. I have not looked at this book, by the way, in probably eight or nine years. I pulled this off my bookshelf for this book look, and I got to be honest, I'm really getting excited about this style just because it's it's so fun to do. Same thing, the way I do stuff now and uh, manga version of Penumbra. Of course, you have to break down the anatomy. Got to talk about the anatomy. That's for sure. This is a different type of figure construction compared to my first book. Now, here's the thing. If you have my first book, Drawing Dynamic Comics, and if you learned how to construct a figure using those basic shapes, there's no reason to go back and go, oh, now I gotta learn a new way. No, you can apply that to this by just tweaking and adjusting the basic shapes from that book. However, when I was learning to draw, I would look at Andrew Loomis, George Bridgman, Bern Hogarth, Jack Ham, all these great how to draw books, how to draw comics the Marvel way. The one thing, every one of those books had a different way to set up a figure with basic shapes. And I experimented with every one until I came up with my own. And that's what will happen with you as well. Experiment until you come up with what is right for you. Obviously showing the shapes in different angles and views. The shapes in action, showing figures in different poses using the shapes. Talking about foreshortening. Look at that, he's for short, we're looking down on him. So different different things. This is really a great way to construct a figure. I, uh, I gotta say, it works for heroes, it works for ordinary people as well. Uh, heroes in action, so I take you through the drawing process to get to this final shot right here. Of course, have to do it with the lovely lady, Penumbra, as well. The manga, manga stuff I like, like uh, the Ghost in the Shell artist, Master Moon Shiro, and the artist behind the book, Bastard. Their women are more elongated, so that's the type of manga I was influenced by. And I was going for, of course, the Raging Monarch. And then, uh, this is a funny story. So this was originally Superman. And I went through DC's licensing department and showed them the drawing. You know, I follow, there's steps you have to follow to get a license to be able to use. So I followed the steps and I submitted this as Superman. 
thinking, oh, they'll let me use it. I mean, I've worked for them, so on and so forth. And I got a letter back saying, no dice, you cannot use our property, so uh, draw, you know, draw something else. So I was like, okay. So I changed them into the protector, blue and gold. This, believe it or not, was originally Wonder Woman, because I submitted this and the other drawing to DC, and they said no. So this is now the Emerald Princess. And of course, let's do the whole fight scene with the characters. And then here, I want to show different styles. Now, most of these I drew by referencing other artists' work. Um, I was able to get a few guest artists in the book. Some I couldn't. One of my favorite artists, and I do know him, but he was just too busy at the time. One of my favorite artists is Ed McGinnis. I love, love Ed's work. So I did a drawing of First Man in old Ed McGinnis style. Proportions are a little different, but it still has that flair and feel. Uh, Teron Grant is a friend of mine. I loved his work when I first saw him explode on the comic scene. He did me a drawing of First Man. And then what I did over here is I showed how the basic shapes fit in underneath these drawings. So this is my basic shape stuff in red to show the figure model I'm using and how it would fit in. Uh, Carlos Baberi, um, probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, love that drawing of First Man. And uh, there's my fear of construction for him. And El Garza did me a drawing of First Man as well. This might be one of my favorites. I really love the exaggeration El has in his work. So that's really cool. Uh, for Penumbra, uh, I think all my examples of Penumbra I did based on other artists' work. So this is based on Art Adams. Uh, I was I love Art Adams' work so much. I love his pen technique and his cross hatching and all that. So I did a drawing of uh, Penumbra in an Art Adams style. Uh, speaking of Ghost in the Shell, this is a drawing of Penumbra based on Masamune Shiro. Uh, like I said, Ghost in the Shell and Appleseed fame, among other things. So I did that. Uh, this one is... Okay, so this is the artist behind the series, Bastard. Uh, Kazushi Higawa. I'm awful. I apologize. I seriously doubt uh, he's going to see this, but I would just say his first name. Uh, the artist of the book, the artist writer of the book Bastard is Kazushi Hajiwara. Yes, I butchered that. That's why I'm an artist. Uh, but this is how he draws his women. I, I love that look. And then we get into drawing the manga heads. A lot of the stuff is the same. The proportions are different. The eyes are different. You know, shapes, sizes, everything like that is different. Even the way they do hair is more graphic shaped as well. Uh, turning the head, getting into that. All this stuff is practice. This I did in my first book, Head Shapes, to show the different characters. Male eyes, the female eyes. Different types of noses, even the ears. Uh, the mouth, of course. The male mouth. Uh, manga characters don't really show the drawings, the, the delineation of the full bottom and upper lip. They just indicate it with little slash lines and stuff. Here you can see different expressions and emotions. Monarch is so pissed off right there. So just a couple couple shots of emotion. Now comparisons. So this is basically how I draw stuff now. Uh, my natural style, once again, pseudo-realistic. American style, manga style, a lot more simplified. So I did that across the board as well for the characters. So you can see the differences in them. Uh, once again, I want to uh, show different artist styles I like. So this is based on Ed McGinnis. Joe Madrera, 
Adam Warren, who's a fantastic artist whose work is very heavily manga influenced. Uh, Art Adams. Uh, get into a little bit about drawing hands and feet. Because you got to draw those pesky hands and feet. Got to know how to do it. So I break that down for you. Show different positions and such. Once again, comparisons and drawing manga and realistic, or not realistic, but, you know, more Western style, you know. Same with the women. Talk about the feet. Not too much there, difference in feet, showing movement of the ankle. To boot or not to boot? To boot or not to boot? Um... Yeah, you know, just different, basically, accoutrements for the characters you're designing and such. Uh, talking about elements of design for, for motion. Manga, since the work is mostly black and white, they do a lot of special effects stuff, which is really cool. Really gives their stuff a lot of movement, and a lot of Western comics have incorporated this into their work. Now we're going to talk about shot selection and panel layout. Uh, this is something I created called, uh, what is it, what's she called? Let's see. I'm just reading to see if I name it. I honestly can't remember what she's called, but, you know, this is a character I created. Uh, she's actually on my website. She's probably named there, you know, kicking some, uh, kicking some butt, you know. Maybe one day I'll do something with this. Who knows? We'll see. Talk about drawing the page. We're talking about page size. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we get into drawing the page. My thumbnail. And then breaking it through with the stick figure technique. Blocking in shapes over the stick figures. Adding details on top of the shapes to the final pencils. Page flow and composition. And then comparison. So I want to show a comparison with this fight page of uh, Monarch and First Man duking it out. And this is more, quote-unquote, America, American style. Now, I usually do panels that are varying shapes and sizes, but for this example, I want to do the more cinematic approach where I use the letterbox for all the panels. Uh, that was pretty popular for a while. And then here... Uh, th so this is actually kind of funny. So this is what I call more manga approach, but it's, it's the manga approach in regards to the drawing style, not the actual page, because, you know, if this was an actual page in one of my first man books, I probably, this works because when you do a page this way, where all the panels are almost the same size and the same, and they are the same shape, but they're pretty much all the same size. What you're showing in this fight is it's an equal footing in the fight. You know, not one of these characters is winning over the other one. And, but all the beats are pretty much the same. There's no real, you know, panel layout is like music with ups or with lows and highs. And this is all pretty much just hmm, going across. Whereas when you do this, you get the big panel, which is like kapow! And then, hmm, so you get the ups and downs. You know, if you looked at it as a graph, the big panel would be up here. And then the little panel, little panel, bigger panel here, bigger panel here. So uh, think about the tempo of the page. But, I mean, if it, this is drawn more exaggerated, but if I wanted to draw this in my pseudo-realistic style, I could... And it would totally work, you know. Uh, adding drama to the page. And then inking techniques. That's my hand. Yes, I know. I know what you're thinking. You should be a hand model. Thank you. Um, maybe one day. So showing how I do different lines and stuff. What the different lines are for. And then we actually get into uh, hair. Hair different types of hairstyles that are done for manga. The outside world, so different, different ways to ink grass and trees and water and such. 
And then inking styles. So here's the pencil drawing. This was inked with a brush. These I wish were printed bigger. I was a little disappointed when I saw this because you can't really see the details. Each one of these drawings was actually done to fit one of these pages. So I really wish these were printed bigger. Uh, this was inked with a pen. And then this was inked with a 102, but I did more rendering like some manga artists do as well. And I did it in a specific uh, direction with the line work. Then I take you through inking a page step by step. And it's that, uh, that fight page there. So you can see the steps I go through in inking a page. And then you get to the final page where you don't see obviously any of the blue and stuff. But the way they do these burst lines and stuff, just really, you feel the force of all those punches and, and such. Here's another page I want to take you through the inking of as well. And then guest inker, my buddy Brad Vancata. Uh, he went to the Kubert School as well. Uh, he graduated in 89, and I graduated in 91. Um, so this is Brad's inking, and uh, he goes through and tells you what he was using and what he was thinking when he did the, the inking of this stuff. He's, a very, he's been to Japan. He's very uh, into this type of work into manga so it's really cool to see his technique for inking this page as well i thought that was really cool then he added gray tones to it some manga if you go to your bookstore you'll see is printed just in black and white but then there's some they they use a lot of gray tones as well because their books are black and white and uh, that is it for this book and there i am that's pretty much how i look today i think i've lost a little weight i look a little chubby there um, and then also by me, uh, Drawing Dynamic Comics. This book is out of print as well, so you can get it rather cheap. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me on this book look of Drawing American Manga Superheroes. I really appreciate it. I'm your hostess with the mostess, 31-year veteran of the comic book industry, Andy Smith. This is First Man, Penumbra, and Monarch, my characters. Please support me. Go check out the campaign on Indiegogo. Back the book. There's great. T there's a lot of great tiers for you to choose from. It's because of you and your support that I can, uh, you know, basically draw what I've always wanted to, which is my own creations. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo.